à tous d'être là pour cette occasion tout à fait exceptionnelle qui nous est donnée d'ouvrir le salon de l'habitat groupé à une dimension internationale. The context of uh, our struggle and our work is um, 25 years of abandonment of our area and dereliction, derelict properties, um, and 25 years of campaigning. Um, we try to convince the local authorities and the housing associations that our houses were worth saving and our community was worth saving. Um, it was very hard to keep our faith as our neighbours were leaving and our streets were empty. Um, there was a turning point in about 2007, 2008. We just thought, we've got to make this place look better. So we started planting flowers and trees. We started planting ivy, climbing up the, the, the walls of the empty houses. Um, we ran a market. Um, we set up a, a market on the street. Uh, we started painting the bricked up windows of the houses with curtains and that just made us feel more positive in what was a very depressing situation but it also made the local authorities and other people take notice of us um, and choosing the community land trust model as a, as a structure for us was a symbolic and obvious choice because there is still a lot of anger in our area we feel that our assets were stripped from us we feel that we lost the community and we lost our properties. So we felt this was symbolic of us taking control back and taking ownership back. The local authority had to run, had run out of ideas and no developers would take the financial risk to actually do the project. One tried but failed. We offered a different approach, this being to divide up the 200 houses between different groups sounds sensible now, um, which meant that the CLT and others would have access to the funds that the local authorities and the housing organisations didn't have access to. So now we have the CLT, which has 13 houses, an eco-cooperative, a small group local, has five houses. There's two large housing associations, which have 75 houses each a private developer who has 15 houses and five homes were sold for one pound on the condition that the people who bought them had the money to fix them up. Um, and there were a few left which were to be demolished because after so long, it was not possible to do anything to them. There are certain conditions which, which were set by the local authority which include that if we didn't renovate the properties after a couple of years, we would have to return them back to the City Council. Our approach and vision of redeveloping the area was developed over many years, and it, but it's been very consistent. We wanted to prevent more demolition because we had already lost lots of streets. We wanted to renovate wherever possible. We wanted to increase the social spaces. We wanted to increase the greenery and the planting in the area and we wanted to maintain what is um, Britain's oldest multicultural and multiracial area. The board members have to be divided into three groups equally. Uh, a third uh, are residents of the Granby Four Streets, a third are residents or people who work in the wider Liverpool Eight Toxteth area, and a third are other stakeholders, so the people we need to work with and our partners. Um, the local authority and housing associations are, are advisors as well, and now the people who used to be the enemy are now uh, very supportive and very, very flexible. We uh, develop the vision with other people by um, holding public meetings and planning meetings like the one in the picture, door-to-door -door consultations and m consultations at our market. Our market is a very good place to connect with the community. Um, and we kept people informed through similar mechanisms uh, with newsletters and drop-in as well. 
is a very strong vision and our architects help, uh, helped us implement that vision. They really understood us. They um, helped us realise our ambitions and their designs and ideas really show this. So we, they kind of were key in making us believe our vision was possible. The CLT's freedom to be able to apply for funds uh, from many different sources was key to our success. As well as having brilliant fundraiser on the board, we needed £1.3 million. And we succeeded in raising it from various sources. And I'll very quickly go through them. That was Steinbeck Studios, which was the... Um, he's a social investor who wanted to support the community uh, doing it for themselves. He, um, it was a £500,000 loan, and it was interest-free for two and a half years. The Nationwide Foundation, which is a corporate funding body, they passed on £125,000. The lottery was £250,000. And of the 13 houses we get, five are for sale. So they will raise £450,000. Doesn't sound a lot to some people, but we want to make it affordable for people to buy, to purchase. Uh, and the commitment of um, £500,000 from Steinbeck Studios was a game changer. Once the council knew that we had this £500,000 loan from a private investor, they, the mayor jumped in his limousine and drove <laughs> up and was knocking on our doors saying, come on, let's do it. We want to keep our rents for the houses affordable, and they, we will do. We will charge 80% of the market rent. But also, we are selling five, and it's quite complicated. We wanted to maintain 20% equity for the Community Land Trust. However, that's not possible anymore in English law. So what we're doing is we're, we're saying that people buying from us at a reduced rate, they will be cheaper than the market rate, will... Um, not be able to sell them for more than the percentage increase of local salaries, local wages. So we don't index link it to housing values because we know they can go up very suddenly. It is not a self-build project. Um, the tenants or potential tenants um, were not refurbishing the houses themselves. But we were involving, involved in managing the building work. That was a lot of work. Um, and we were involved in advising and discussing ideas in detail with the architects. Uh, the builders took on trainees and apprentices from the area, um, and many local people worked on the site, which was great to see. At first, we networked with the people and the organisations that we needed to work with, because it was important to start there and not go there. So that was Liverpool City Council, the housing associations, the funders, the politicians. The networks have now exploded. <laughs> we now have lots of people and organisations who want to partner with us or find out what we do, how we've done it. And these include academics, the art world, community groups, housing organisations, the media. It goes on and on. Everyone is welcome to visit the scheme. Do it yourself. Determined women, organic, creative, exhausted. <laughs> um, I also wanted to congratulate Granby Street for creating hope in a place where previously there was none and for con completely transforming an area into something vibrant and exciting and bringing people in.